Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining me this morning. For those of you that haven't met me before, my name is Stacey Dandridge and I'm one of the key account managers here at Fusion Occupational Health. And I'm really excited to be showcasing our new case management system to you this morning. Um, as Ashley's just said, I can't see if anybody's got their hands up and obviously you are automatically put on mute. So if you do have any questions throughout, please pop them in the chat. Um, if it's relevant to the section that we're on, Ashley will um, will shout out for you and, and we'll, we'll um, try and answer as best we can um, throughout the session. Um, and if it's not appropriate there and then, then we'll, we'll, we will come back to the question at the end of the session. Before we move on to the, the portal demonstration, um, we just wanted to do a recap um, on a few, a few pointers. So things such as what occupational health can and can't support you with, uh, when to refer to occupational health, how to get the most out of your occupational health referrals, uh, once you've got the report, um, some of the, the, the common phrases there in terms of interpreting those reports, a recap on our manager's helpline, and then we'll go on to um, the new case management system itself. OK, so first of all, then, what can occupational health do? So occupational health is there to maintain the well-being of your employees by preventing and removing ill health and developing solutions for you as a business to keep staff uh, with health issues remaining in the workplace. OK, so our occupational health pro professionals, our clinicians are there to give an opinion on an individual's fitness for work. They'll also give advice on workplace adjustments for you to consider as a business. They will give advice and support to both you, yourself as managers and HR, as well as your employees, all about managing their health whilst at work. And the advice that they give will always be objective, clear and meaningful, and it will always be evidence based and it will be based on the information that you provide within that referral form and of the information that is gathered during the consultation with the employee. Our clinicians will always promote um, and maintain healthy lifestyles for all colleagues and they will always pr promote risk assessment where appropriate. So what we can't do then, so we're not there to police or manage the absence for you. Um, we're not able to respond or comment on any policy or management issues such as things like pay or, or disciplinary action. We can't send anybody home. Ultimately, that's a management decision. And we will not provide any confidential information without consent. OK, really important. We'll touch on consent um, a few slides in. We're not able to offer a diagnosis or provide um, any treatment plans. Um, we, we can support with with uh, treatment pathways, but we're not there to, to diagnose that um, that condition initially. It's an advisory service, OK? And we can't decide what is and isn't a reasonable ad adjustment. Ultimately, again, that's a, a decision, decision for management. So when would you refer to occupational health then? So we, we say that referrals must be in line with your sickness absence policy, so all, always refer back to that. Um, and there can be it can be a number of reasons. So uh, the first one being absenteeism. So it could be that you've got on frequent short term absence for a variety of different reasons, or it could be that they're you know slightly more longer term um, and that they're off uh, for for a longer period. It might be that you've noticed um, some concerns about the health um, health condition or change in their behaviour, attendance, that type of thing. Um, effectively, where their health condition is affecting their um, ability to carry out their job. Workplace adjustments, so um, providing advice on those necessary adjustments that you can make and um, to ensure that the employee can work safely and effectively. And then finally, fitness for work. So are they actually indeed fit, fit to work in the first place? So we'll provide advice on whether they can attend the workplace and any reasonable adjustments to support that return to work if necessary. And remember, your employee doesn't have to be absent for you to make that referral. It's all about that early intervention and getting getting the referral in quick to support the individual um, when they most need it. So making a referral then, these are our sort of hints and tips of the information um, that we would like to see within that referral form um, in order to get the, the, the most out of it. So essentially, this is your voice within that referral. Obviously, the, the employee will go and have that consultation with the clinician. This is your opportunity um, to give um, your, your voice over uh, within this form. So first of all, what are your reasons for referring your employee? OK, we've just discussed some. It could be absenteeism. Um, you know, it could be off on frequent short term absences for a variety of different reasons. It could be a change in, in their performance or behaviour. So pop that um, in the referral form and, and provide any detail behind that reason. 
Remember, the information that you give to us must only contain facts. OK, it's not your opinion on, you know, what, why, why they're late or, you know, any, any opinions are not are not valid. We need we need the facts of the case. Um, so please, please remember that when when populating the forms. If there is a GP fit note um, and it has any diagnosis or, or uh, recommendations on there, please ensure that you attach that. There is an attachment section uh, within the new portal, much the same as the old portal. So I'll show you how to upload those when we move to the demonstration. Um, do you have any background information which may be useful to know? So things like, has the employee had this condition before? If so, how long ago? Um, is there any previous sickness absence? Is it due to the same reason? might be due to a different reason. Include that in there because sometimes they can be interlinked um, and it just gives that clinician the full the full picture. Um, include the, the details of the range of duties that the employee is expected to undertake. So you can attach the job description when it's relevant. Um, so if that job description is up to date and does include those daily tasks, then, then please, please attach that. However, if not, um, you know, please outline what those specific tasks are on the form. Um, and more importantly, highlight those that are, that, are, that are causing the issue. So what are those specific tasks that are causing that individual um, an issue? OK. Outline whether any adjustments or modi modifications to work practice have already been made. Uh, prior to the referral. So what remedial action have you already taken to support this individual? OK, you might have had welfare meetings. You might have already put some reasonable adjustments in place. So let us know what you've already tried. We don't want to be advising um, the, you know, the same things that you've already tried. We want to be um, progressing this case for you. So let us know um, and also let us know um, sort of what modifications you could um, you could reasonably support and for how long you could facilitate that return to work. OK, there is an attachment section um, on the portal and things that we would ask for within this attachment section would be things like absence, um, history trackers, uh, risk assessments, GP fit notes, like I've already mentioned. Specialist reports can be really beneficial if the employee is, is willing to share those with you beforehand um, and then any welfare meeting notes and any other relevant information that's pertinent to the case. Just a reminder, please don't use any abbreviations or internal jargon. OK, use full sentences so our clinicians understand exactly what you mean. Um, and there is obviously the opportunity to ask additional specific questions, uh, much the same in our current portal. So you will have the opportunity to to ask those specific questions. And finally, remember, the better the referral, the better the resorting report recommendations and advice that will be given. OK. So the employee then. You must get consent. Uh, OK, so from the offset, when, when you know that you're ready to refer to occupational health, you must obtain the individual's consent um, to, to start the process. OK, and the full nature and content of the referral must always be discussed between you and your employee before that referral is made. So be completely transparent with them, with the information that you're providing us with. So that there's no surprises um, and, and just be really clear on that. If they are at work when the appointment is due, ensure that you give them the time to attend the consultation and also you know, a private and confidential space for them to have to take that call or, or video call. Um, just a reminder that cancellations within two working days with a nurse and five working days with a doctor um, are charged in full if they are not attended. So it's really important that you're having those regular um, keep in touch day, uh, keep in touch calls if they're if they are off work um, or just regular conversations with the individual to ensure that they will attend their appointment. The employee can expect a warm, friendly, professional welcome. They will be treated with respect and everything is dealt with in confidence. Um, at the start of the consultation, the clinician will explain the full referral process with them. And then at the end of the session, they will summarise the advice that they are going to write within their report. Obviously, the employee will have any opportunity to ask any questions. Um, and if, if you do have any employees that are, are slightly concerned or worried about this process, we do have um, videos on our website and we'll pop in the link in the chat at the end um, that you can signpost your employees to. So interpreting reports and once you've got the report, some of the key phrases that we commonly see um, are listed below. So we've got no underlying medical condition contributing to the absence. So that's telling you that for, for short term absences, there's no underlying cause for the absence and therefore you need to manage that through your normal absence process. OK, so things like absence improvement plans. Phase return to work, 
Um, so where the clinician recommends this, they will always recommend some some timescales that, that you can um, that you can look at. Um, again, you can take that advice on board and, and work that within uh, within the realms of your organisation. And likely to return in the foreseeable future. OK, so this one is telling you that, you know, they are likely to be um, the absence is likely to be ongoing. OK, they're not going to be coming back to work anytime soon. So you need to decide as a business if you can sustain that level of absence indefinitely or whether you're going to have to consider um, managing them with your own business um, capability. OK, and finally, the report indicates the level of absence is unlikely to improve over the coming months or the level of absence is likely to continue indefinitely much the same as the one before. Uh, this is sort of telling you that, again, it, it, it's not likely to improve. The absence is not likely to improve. So you need to decide as a business if you can sustain that level of absence. OK, so once you've received the report, make sure that you take the time to talk through the report with your employee. OK, have a look at the advice and the rec recommendations that have been given and agree those next steps. Keep in regular contact with your employee if they are out of work. OK. That's really important to keep in touch. Uh, and once they do return to work, make sure that you are conducting those return to work interviews each and every time. And we know that work is generally good for our physical and mental health and long periods out of work can be harmful for our physical and mental health. So again, all about that early intervention, early referrals um, to get the, the best outcome for all. Just a reminder that we do have our manager's helpline. OK, so this is a feature of our service that provides expert clinical advice to managers and HR. OK, so it could be um, a question that you know, you're not quite sure how to how to um, what, what wording to put in a case um, or you just need some some advice that's maybe more on the clinical side. You can contact our manager's helpline um, and we will put you in touch with one of our clinicians to support you.